One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So, welcome to the weekly paint along. My name is Jeff, and we are going to be painting Romag Dabble from Reaper Miniatures. And I'm update the name of the stream. There we go. Hey Zox, hope everything's going good with you guys today. All right, so the plan for today, I've got this uh, Romag Davil figure, and it's a Reaper Bones figure, one of their newer ones. And my plan is, I'm going to paint this guy like he's uh, he's a rogue. He's supposed to be a thief, but he's kind of like a wealthy guy who's trying to pretend to be like a rogue, but he doesn't really need to be a rogue and he hasn't quite figured out yet how to make himself fit in. So all of his equipment and all of his stuff's gonna look really nice, be really high quality, uh, but he's pretending to be a street fighter, street rogue kind of guy. So that's the general idea I'm going for. Um, the colors for today, I don't really have um, the palette picked out in a lot of detail, but what I'm intending to do, we've got um, I'm going to try something, the colors I haven't tried before, it's a little bit of an experiment, and we're going to work on how to how to come up with a way to, to highlight this. So I'm going to use Nightshade, Night Sky Indigo as the shadow color of the cloak, and I'm going to blend that into Imperial Purple, so it's going to be purple in the higher areas close to the light sources, and then I'm going to highlight that with Amethyst Purple. To kind of keep with the purple theme, I'm going to use the nightshade purple as my black for almost everything. So that's the main like overall color. It's going to be those purples and that indigo. And then for the overall kind of lightening of that to highlight, I'm going to use my favorite Reaper Creamy Ivory. I'm going to give him a rosy skin color. So rosy shadow and rosy skin are going to be the main skin tones. Not there's a lot of that showing. We're going to use auburn shadow to darken the skin tone and then I'm also going to have a bunch of leather accoutrements and stuff so he's going to have a mixture of black and brown on some leather areas ruddy leather on others and we're going to highlight all of those with let's use let's use harvest brown and orange brown it's kind of my couple of my favorite leather colors. So some leather is going to be ruddy leather, harvest brown and orange brown. Other leather is going to be black and brown. And then those same two. So it's slightly different looking, but similar colored leather. And then outside of that, we've got a weapon. So his little dagger there is going to be, I'm going to use some Vallejo metallics on that. I just find that I, I prefer them for those quick, um, bits of metal. So it, it, it's a bit thinner, flows a bit more smoothly than the Reaper stuff. I like it quite a lot and it'll be quick for painting. Little buckles and little things like that. And I'm not quite sure what color I'm going to do that gem on his belt. Or maybe I'll just do it as a metallic belt buckle. I haven't decided that yet. We'll figure that out as I go. Yep, yeah, that's pretty much all we need to know about that guy. And I'll do the usual, you know, player character base on him. Give him a bit of a um, a stony gray looking base. Okay, ready to go. So, step one, put on some eyeballs so we can see what the heck I'm doing. And our base coat for that cloak, we're going to have indigo, was it Night Sky Indigo 9422 from Reaper? will be the the darker half 
And then we're going to transition that into Imperial Purple, which is a lovely purple color from Reaper. Now mine's a bit dried up. It's a bit crusty. There we go. Need lots of that. And we're going to highlight that, like I said, with the Amethyst Purple. strange and creamy ivory to highlight it and we might as well get some of our skin tone base coat stuff on there as well I'm gonna start with rosy shadow a little bit of rosy skin this guy doesn't have much in the way of skin showing Auburn shadow. Okay. Oh, I'm going to grab my nice big. Um, Synthetic brush, and I'm going to start with my Night nice Sky Indigo. So my overall light direction for this guy is going to be kind of... Is that what I want to do? It's going to be like he's under a street light. So the light is basically coming straight on from that direction. There's going to be lighter on this side darker on the back kind of a, a classic one and because of his his angle the when you look at him directly from the front or on that kind of three-quarter view should look pretty dramatic with a bit of uh, like a sense of movement like he's kind of moving forward hopefully all right so i'm going to start by uh, painting the lower half this color And all my brush strokes are going to be going downwards to pull away from the light. I do the same thing on the back. We're going to pull downwards. I'm going to paint about two thirds of the back this purple color, this indigo color. And just giving a little bit of a base coat, pulling from the top downwards. And let's get the camera focus working properly. There we go. That's about where I want it. And we'll just keep going with this. So this uh, Night Sky Indigo is a fairly thin paint anyway. I don't really thin it very much. But uh, generally speaking, for this stage, I don't really want to thin the paint very much. I want to just put that layer on thinly, as it were. So just constantly keep the move, the brush moving in the same direction, pulling that color downwards. And when we go to do the Imperial Purple, we're going to reverse the brush direction, and we're going to pull the paint upwards. Go into there. Kind of put a little bit in his uh, his hood. That's the word I was looking for. Okay, so now the next step, I'm going to take those two paints, which are very close to the same value. The purple might actually be a little bit darker. I'm going to make a half step between those two. And I'm going to start in my um, zone that I made purple. And I'm going to pull upwards, covering just the top sort of one third of the area that I already did Night Sky Indigo. And these are gentle, light brush strokes. 
and pulling the purple upwards with every brush stroke. So I'm going to change the direction of the model to make it easier. Start about a third of the way into the previous color and just keep pulling the paint up. Keep moving it up. Same thing here. Start part way into that purple or the indigo and just work my way up. So just light brush strokes, relatively thin paint. Um, I didn't add any water to this. This, Most of these Reaper paints are fairly thin anyway. They don't really need much. And always working the brush strokes upwards to create a bit of a, a layering effect. Okay. There I go. So now I've got two colors. And the next thing I'm going to do is go to just straight Imperial Purple. And I'm, I'm ignoring the high and low spots at the moment, but we'll fix that when we start highlighting with the next colors. So now I'm going to look for just the most, the top part of the cloak around his hand. And now on the hood in here, I'm going to start just in the edge of the previous mixed color. And move upward, all the brush strokes are going to move upwards. Getting this purple base coat on there. Okay, this is Imperial Purple from Reaper that I'm using. My light source is basically frontal from, from that direction. So that's the direction I'm highlighting towards. I'll do the same thing on the back of this. Back of this cloak. It's a bit hard to get that on the camera. There we go. So start part way into the the half step color that I made, and just keep the brush strokes moving upwards. Try not to overbrush anywhere and damage the paint, which is partly dry. Okay, now I can still see a bit of a line there. So what I'm going to do is keep working. I'm going to do that half step color again. I'm going to start part way into the purple that I just did. I'm going to let it dry for a moment. I'm going to pull down from the purple into that half step zone. So I'm crossing the border of the purple where the imperial purple meets the half step color. And then I'm reaching down to the indigo and pulling back up into the half step color. That should give us an interesting transition from one color to the next. And some people out there are going, why didn't he just wet blend that? And because I'm doing it in a simple way. 
make it easier for people that are just starting out that might not have the control yet necessary to get a similar result to what we're we're going to do and wet blending kind of as soon as people know a bit more about what they're doing okay let's change the focus on that there we go okay so I'm let that dry for a minute and now I'm going to do the skin tone. The only place the skin is showing. Oh, you know what? No, his hands are skin tone as well. His hands are skin tone. You can see his little fingernails there. And this part of his face will be skin tone. So let's get a smaller brush. This is size one. I'm going to mix just a little bit of auburn shadow into rosy shadow. It's going to give me a slightly darker, more orangey skin tone. And that's going to be the color I make my base coat for my skin. So I'll do the hand first, see if I like the color. If I don't, I'll change the mix. I'm okay with that. In terms of the environment where this guy is, I'm picturing him as being kind of out on the street in the evening or uh, maybe in the early morning, the darkest part of the night, trying to be all stealthy and causing trouble or maybe he's trying to stop trouble, who knows. But he's a bit of a naive nobleman out there trying to be a ruffian or vigilante or something or he's stealing from other rich people, who knows. But he's He's being a rogue at night in the city. So he's walking around some cobblestone streets. That's my idea. And his face is a little bit of a challenge to reach into. Make sure we get his forehead, his nose, the bridge of his nose. And then he's got that mask on, so we want to make sure that the skin tone goes right up to the edge of the mask. I get some bubbles forming around his eyes. I want to make sure I get rid of those because I don't want to have to deal with the after effects of that. Let me get that skin tone in the eye socket on both sides. There, no bubbles. Okay, so that's enough for that. We'll let that dry for a little while, and then we'll come back to it. So let's do some leather now. And I'm thinking I'm going to do this uh, jacket he's got going on here. It's going to be the ruddy brown leather. And these armor plates, these are going to be the black and brown leather that I was talking about earlier. So on my palette, I'm putting black and brown and ruddy brown, or ruddy leather. So there's ruddy leather, and there's black and brown. His boots are going to be black and brown as well. Black and brown, uh, 9137 from Reaper Master Series Paints is what we're using. But again, for any of this, you don't have to use the same colors I'm using. Use whatever color you like. Um, the, the key thing we're going to aim for is an, an idea that you can use in your own painting. Okay. All right, so the ruddy leather is going to go in behind. So that's on all this cloth. I know the color is called ruddy leather, but we're making it a dark, like soft leather cloth. I guess leather isn't a cloth. That's, you know what I mean. His jacket is like soft leather with hard boiled leather plates attached to it. go that's going to be a hard leather bit this is going to be a soft leather bit underneath so in between these plates is going to be soft leather I think this little uh, thief's pouch he's got going on under his cloak that's going to be soft leather 
the belt pouch there. Let's make that sloth leather too. Pants, leggings, whatever they are under there, are going to be soft leather. And I feel like his boots should be soft leather too. Maybe we'll make the boots a different color. Mm, I don't know. I'll have to think about that for a minute. I think his mask in there is going to be soft leather. So we'll paint that this soft, ruddy leather. Now, if you're kind of a new painter, um, you might find it a bit intimidating to paint some details in there. But so the uh, the boots are going to be soft leather, but I might highlight them with a different color than the um, than the other layer, leather areas to make them a bit distinct. go and I'm gonna be using the hard leather or the, the, the black and brown to be like the hard boiled leather base coat so we'll do that on the various armor plates I think I'll put that on the handle of the dagger as well in there like that So I'm painting the armor plates. So I'm just working my way around, systematically painting all the armor plates. Do this wrist guard. This is actually very similar to the way the uh, the box art is painted for this figure. I think that was painted by uh, Rhonda Bender. It's quite a nice paint job, that one. But the big difference being we're going to do the cloak as a purple color. Uh, she has done pretty much everything, a slight variety of brown leather. And we're going to just have a little bit more color on there. Okay. I'm also going to do, I'm going to do a very light wash of black and brown. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to put that in the eye sockets. It might be a little bit of a challenge to see this. There, in there. And this is just to mark where the uh, brow is and where the eyes are. 
So I want this to go under his brow and basically fill the eye socket with that color. It's okay if you make a mess with this and it goes all over the place because we're going to come back and highlight that skin tone again anyway. And just to make it look similar to the rest of his skin, let's do that same very dark color, black and brown, as a little bit of a wash on his the rest of his skin tone. Bear in mind that we're going to come back and do a whole bunch of highlighting on that skin anyway. So this is just going to darken the spaces between his fingers, make him look a little bit dirty. And I think that's what this guy is doing anyway. He's pretending to be a low life. So he probably includes that as part of his disguise somewhat incompetently. Okay, there we go. So now, actually the whole thing is pretty much base coated at that point. So why don't we do the base coating on all the metallic area as well now? No, nope, that's too early for that. We'll do that later. We'll do that later. Okay, so back to purple. Back to the purple. I'm going to go back to my synthetic brush now. And my plan is to start um, sort of highlighting the the purple areas. I'm going to take some of that imperial purple and I'm going to add a bit of amethyst purple into it to make a highlight. So basically I'm trying to make a value difference between the highlight and the shadow. So make the highlights lighter, leave the shadows dark. So I'm adding this um, amethyst purple to the imperial purple because it's a lighter color and I'll slowly build up the highlights that way. So now what I'm looking for, the light's basically coming front on. So I want anything which is facing directly towards the light, I'm going to give a highlight of this color. So the light's coming this way, so we'll do all of this, a little bit of a highlight. So my brush strokes go sideways, and I'm pulling the paint up to the top where I want it to be lighter colored. I'll do that on this ridge along the back by his boots as well. Now because of that angle, I can't really pull upwards into that very easily. I almost have to push the paint to do it, so I'll just change the angle of the model. And try to keep pulling the brush strokes upwards to make that work. Do the same thing on this part of his cloak at the front here. Make the purple nice and rich. And on the back, same idea. I'm going to Start much higher up. I'll start just at this little ridge where his arm is underneath. I'll start there to highlight. And across his back here, where there's that little bend. We'll start at the top of that bend to bring the color upwards. Really focused on the raised areas for this. And I'll come back in at the end, not at the end, but at a later stage and bring the shadows back in. So hitting the raised areas with purple, this lighter purple. And then we'll look at the model from the top and from the front, to make sure we haven't kind of missed anywhere. So look from the top first, I'm gonna pull this color right over the top of the hood towards the front. There we go. That's pretty good, I'm happy with that. Looks like I missed a little bit of uh, armor color at the front in there. I'm just going to touch that up. That should be the darker brown color. Right in there. So I'll do that now. There we go. A little bit in there too. Just a little bit of a touch up needed. Okay, there we go. All right, looking very rogue-like already. 
Now I'm going to add more. So I've got like a, a highlight started, but I'm going to, it needs to go quite a bit lighter. So I'm going to add more amethyst purple. So it's probably two thirds amethyst purple, one third imperial purple now, but that's just an estimate. It doesn't have to be exact. And you just have to judge for yourself whether it is lighter or not. Start a little bit further up than last time. But keeping my brush strokes going upwards to create those highlights. Focused on the raised areas. There we go. A little bit on the inside of the hood. The light would catch from that direction. And then we'll do the same thing. A little bit on that edge of the cloak. The other edge of the cloak. Working our way upwards. These folds of the hood. Really focused on the the raised parts of the folds in the cloth. I just keep working my way up. Don't want to completely fill in those deep folds. You know that the bottom of those folds would reflect a little bit of light, but we're just gonna. Um, that would look a little bit odd, I think, on this to have that because there's very very narrow folds. So for now, we're just gonna. Um, focused on the raised areas. Now, same thing on the back. There's that break point on his arm. We'll work our way around. Start a little bit higher up. Not much higher up, just a little bit. Because the highlights tend to be quite big. And they tend to go right almost, like your strongest highlight goes almost right to the edge where it drops off around the curve into the shadow. So these highlights are going to be fairly large. But just above that break point where the can see where I mean like right there where the curve changes so the highlights gonna go quite far down that curve but then it'll suddenly drop it off into shadow below that so that's what I'm looking for is to bring the highlights fairly large almost right up to the edge of that curve Working our way up. Hey, solar wind. It's coming along. But I'm going to go lighter still. So now I'm going to go pretty much just pure uh, amethyst purple. Start a little bit further up again. So there's my, there's the curve. I'm going to start quite far up. And it might look a little bit stark at this stage, but uh, the amethyst purple will darken as it dries, and these highlights will rec recede a little bit. So this is where I was talking about earlier, where in the space in there, the light's going to catch the center of that fold. So we want a little bit of highlighting in the bottom of that fold as well. Same with this one. A 
and especially that one's quite a large fold so we'll get some highlighting in the bottom of that keep working our way around it helps to kind of visualize the whole space like is this being a cylinder if you look at it from the side that's like a cylindrical shape and we're highlighting the top of it and anywhere even if there's deeper folds in that the um, uh, the bottom of the folds is going to get a bit of additional color. I wonder if people are having a hard time with the internet today. I see lots of people dropping in and then dropping right out again. our way across so now from the front you can see the line that I went to before was there and my light is coming this way so I'm gonna keep coming quite a bit further forward with that highlight there we go and now I'm gonna so it pulled it across the front of the hood and now I'm gonna come from below and put on my uh, pull upwards Make the two meet like that. I'm just using the fairly large synthetic brush to do this. I can use uh, a sharper brush, and a better quality brush later if I want to, to uh, smooth out some of the smaller areas of blending, smaller details, but we don't really need to do that today. We're just gonna do in a macro like a larger scale shift from shadow to light is what I'm looking for. In the front of the hood. There we go. A bit of a remnant of a mold line. I cleaned the mold lines off, but there's a little bit of a furry bit sticking out there on the front. So I'm going to grab my very pointy tweezers here and try to pull that little tiny hair off. There we go, gone. All right, so the question becomes, is this light enough to be the top of the mini? And my thought is no. So I'm gonna be highlighting quite a bit down to about the tops of these armor plates, maybe hitting the tops of his boots. So I'm going to um, take some amethyst purple and I'm going to add in a little bit of the creamy ivory just to lighten it a little bit further. I might go one level lighter than this. And I'll do that on, so same idea as before, working towards the light. Um, so the light is at the crest of that, that round shape. It's coming down this way. So my highlight's going to start down there, and the, directly towards the light is going to be about there. Okay, so that's directly towards the light. And there's my highlight. Now, as I look across the top of it, if that's directly towards the light, then back here is going to catch that as well, like that. Okay, that's, that's where I hit, it was along to there. So those areas are getting the light directly as well. Just a little bit to about there. Then we'll do the front part of this hood like that. Just the most raised areas. So there's directly towards the light. Kind of like, like that. And we'll pull up there as well. Now, I'm making a bit of a choice here to say that the light source is not, uh, to make sure the light source is not very intense. That means that the intensity of the light is going to drop off quite quickly. So some people would say that the highlight should go all the way to the bottom of the cloak down there. 
but I want it to the, the light to fade. The same reason as across here, the highlighting will be fairly strong at the top, but it's going to fade quickly and the base is going to stay, uh, stay fairly dark. Um, keep going with this, working towards our light source again. So if we line it up like that, we can see that we're going to get light back there on the back shoulder. And all those bits of the hood that are raised facing towards the light. That's one of my favorite things to do, is just keep rotating the model a little bit to figure out what the light would hit, where it wouldn't hit. And just kind of trust your eye to make those choices. Okay, so my light's coming pretty much like, like there. I see your question there about um, the purple, and I don't really know the answer on that, except to say that Um, you can go back in and glaze with the mid-tone or shadow purples that you used to bring back the color saturation. And it's going to look, look less um, desaturated. So, for example, this mid-tone uh, Imperial Purple that I've been using. Okay, there's the Night Sky Indigo Imperial Purple. Uh, the amethyst purple. The amethyst purple is basically the same pigment as that, but it's had white added to it and it's desaturated. So this is a fairly saturated purple. So if I want to keep the purple saturation, I can go back and glaze with this purple, pull that color from the, the, the highlight down towards the mid-tone area, and that's going to bring, bring back some of the, the purple color saturation. Um, if, you want it, if you want it to be uh, much richer color. You can also glaze it with an ink. Uh, use a purple ink and that's going to give you, uh, you know, just a richer color. You could also glaze it with an indigo um, to bring up the color further down more. It's going to make the whole thing a little, shift the whole thing towards blue. You wouldn't want to use a blue ink though. Blue might just really wipe out uh, some of the purple. Yeah, that is a Winsor & Newton Synthetic Cotman Series size two, size two round. It, there was a sale on them, so I got a whole bunch for a pretty good price. So that's what I've been using as my synthetics for a little while now. Um, it's not really a specific preference, it's just what, what I got a good deal on, basically. All right, so I'm gonna bring back now, I think I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. I think a little bit about uh, the, the skin, because I gotta be able to reach in there to paint the skin tone. And that's actually quite tight to get at in there. So I'm going to take a better brush. I'm going to get a size zero. Where's a size zero? That looks like a size zero. That is a size zero series seven. And I'm going to use that to paint uh, the skin. So I have a fairly dark skin tone on there already, which was this uh, mixture of rosy shadow and auburn. So I'm just using a straight rosy uh, skin shadow. This is from the rosy skin triad from Reaper. And things were going pretty good earlier, but things are starting to dry out quite quickly now. Things seem to have changed, conditions have changed a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of flow improver, just a touch, to slow down the speed at which things are drying for me. Just the tiniest amount. That should let me get a smoother highlight on. So this is the first layer of highlight with the rosy skin. And I'm going to start on the face, I think. So when you look in deep in there at the face, it's really hard to see with this light. But he's got that mask, and his nose sticks up above the mask. He's got a little knot in his forehead. He's got his brow. And one thing to remember, because of that natural shadow from the the hood, um, he's going to look much darker than he would normally. Um, so I'm going to be doing extra highlighting on the skin under the hood to make sure that the natural shadow doesn't make the skin tone 
uh, completely invisible. There we go. He's got well sculpted eyelids. I can't remember who sculpted this. I took a look just a few minutes ago. I don't know. This, I guess it's not really super relevant. I'll try to remember. But yeah, it's got lovely sculpted eyelids. Which is going to make it a bit easier to pick out where his eyes are. So now for his left eye, I'm looking for that sculpted eyelid to just catch it with a little bit of this paint to bring out the shape. There it is. And again, because of that natural shadow, we're going to make this quite a bit lighter than we would have normally. It's right in there. The side of his cheek with that color. There we go. Not too bad. Now, his eyes are really, really hard to see. So I'm going to paint the eyes now so that I don't have a hard time reaching in there to get them again. I already painted the eyes black and brown. So I'm going to now paint the eyes. There's a giant blob of water there on the palette. I got to get rid of that before I make a mess. Push that off the side. I'm going to use the um, creamy ivory which is lighter than I would normally use. I like Snow Shadow or Ghost White or something like that. But I use this uh, lighter color today to make the whites of his eyes more visible. Now, if you're a beginning painter, just acknowledge that these eyes are quite tough to get at because of the hood and because they're recessed and they're above that mask. So what I'm going to try to do, this is basically a two-step eye. There's his eye socket is dark can just make it out there in the shot right now okay and I'm gonna reach in and I'm just gonna paint the whites of his eyes and leave that color as the iris in the pupil so I'm just gonna put a little tiny dash of white deep in that little space on the outside so from my perspective it's on the left side of his eye I'm just gonna put a little dot of white in that eye socket and not paint over his iris and that's going to give the illusion that his eyes are there. Okay, let me see if I can, can focus that a little bit better so you can see exactly what I did. There it is. Just a slight impression of an eye. And now I'm going to try to reach through and do the same thing on the other eye which is right inside that fold of cloth, way in the back there. Don't know if we're going to be able to show this on camera because I'm probably going to hit the bridge of his nose, okay? And that's why I'm doing this now instead of later because it will be easier to fix the inevitable mess that I'm going to make. So I'm going to accept that I'm going to make a mistake, but do it at a time that lets me fix it. Okay, I didn't make that much of a mistake, but it doesn't look great. So now how do I fix that it becomes the question. If you can see, there's a giant blob of white paint in there. I got a couple of options. One is I can repaint the eye socket with the um, black and brown. I could try to uh, cut in around that mess that I made with the black and brown, kind of bring back the eyelash. That's what I just did. Actually, that does not look, that doesn't look horrible. Let's see how I can See you under that, oh yeah. The eye itself is not really that visible in there. I think what we need to do is put a very dark line under his brow and that'll help clean that up. So I'm gonna grab my black and brown and a little bit of the flow improver, just a touch. And I'm going to put a line basically like under the brow right there on both sides. And if I end up giving him a unibrow, that's okay because I haven't done most of the skin tone yet and I can go back and fix it. So I'm aiming right under that eyelid and then under the other part of his brow over there. That's also going to give the illusion of eyebrows. Okay, and it helps make the eye look a little bit cleaner. 
I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, before I proceed, I'm going to put a black line, or not a black, what's this? Black and brown line at the top of the mask as well. Because I don't want to have to come in and, bl and black line again later and run the risk of messing up all the skin tone and making a huge mess. So where the mask meets the skin at the top, I'm going to put this black, uh, black and brown as a line right at the top of the mask. And it's okay if it gets on both the mask and on the skin because I'm still going to come in and touch up the skin tone and I haven't really painted the mask yet. There we go. So it created a little bit of a boundary around his, his eyes there. There we go. And he's looking off kind of a little bit to his left across his arm at the guy he's thinking about robbing or the guy he's thinking about attacking who's been robbing people or I don't know, whatever shenanigans he's got in mind. He's sizing up the situation. That's what he's doing. He's sizing it up, making his decisions. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. Okay, hopefully you're happy with that too. All right, I'm going to fix the focus again and go back a little bit further away. Right there. Okay, go back to finishing the skin tone. So the last skin tone I did was the rosy shadow. So I'm going to mix half rosy skin and half rosy shadow. Get my first highlight on the skin. And I'm going to do that across. Actually, I forgot to do his hands, rosy shadow. I'll go back and do that in a second. So we'll do this on the bridge of his nose. I'm using my best brush for this just because it's such a small area to work in. I don't want to make any mistakes now at this stage. I mean, it, it only took me about 10 minutes to do all that. So if I make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. But uh, I don't want to have to redo it if I don't have to. There we go. And I want to highlight his cheek just below his eye, above that mask. And he's got that little eyelid beautifully sculpted in there. That little eyelid's going to get a little bit of a highlight too. Just a little tiny one. And there I made a little mistake. So we're going to fix that. Covered over some of my black and brown. So we'll fix that now. There we go, fixed. Good to go. Okay. And now I'm going to do, I forgot to do the hands earlier, I'll do that now. There's my rosy shadow. Give it the knuckles, their first highlight. This thumb kind of shows in there too. Give the thumb a different highlight. So the tops of the knuckles, backs of the fingers, just on the most raised part. There we go. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Now, earlier I managed to not base coat the back of his hand. We're gonna make sure we do that now. You guys probably didn't make that mistake. I'll fix that. Top of his thumb. The back of the hand right there. And a little bit of his palm is showing under there. So we'll get that a little bit of this highlight. It's kind of like when your hand, oh, it's this part of the hand that I just highlighted. Go. Not 
too many people chatting to get today. If anybody has any questions or anything as we go, please don't hesitate to ask. It uh, makes me feel less lonely. I like it when people are asking me questions. And uh, it uh, gives me ideas about what to fill the dead space because uh, I can't listen to music. Give me a reason to talk, an idea of what to talk about that might be of interest to you. So yeah, ask me questions. Better yet, get on the Discord. If you're, especially if you're a miniature monthly member and you're out there hanging out, get on the Discord and you're welcome to chat with me as I paint as well. Okay. So there's the fingers of both hands. Highlights done on his face. So now I want to do that 50-50 uh, mix of uh, rosy skin shadow and rosy skin on the backs of the hands and the fingers. So up there. Back here. So this is a little bit of a, of a different process than what I normally do where I don't really have to worry about making any mistakes. Um, there's a bit of a challenge in this guy because reaching in to paint the skin tone it's difficult to reach in there. So that's why we're getting this done first this time when normally I just wouldn't worry about it. Main reason I chose this guy uh, where normally I choose people to paint that are very open posture is I really like that cloak. And uh, we, if we, depending how things go, if people are interested, <coughs> excuse me, if the time allows, I might do a free hand or something on the cloak. Thank you, Zox. Thank you. I wonder how much of that you missed. I think I turned it off when I started coughing, did I? <clears throat> Not much. Okay. Anyway, I was just saying we can give this guy whatever kind of free hand we like. So if you've got any ideas for that, let me know. He's just pretending to be a poor guy so we can... Give him a fancy clove, we can give him a tartan. Eh, maybe not a tartan today, but we can definitely do some something a little bit uh, more ornate on his cloak. If you want to see a very basic freehand on uh, Karina last week, I did a very simple freehand. A little bit of a blue line, a few little wave shapes. And uh, it's, that's the sort of complexity that I'm thinking of, something like that. Definitely not like some fancy hound's tooth cloth or whatever. I think I've got the system pretty much dialed in now for being able to monitor three chat rooms, multiple video lines, and uh, and a moderator channel all at the same time without going completely bonkers. Just got to remember to keep the audio turned on. Okay, so now I'm going to do 
just straight rosy skin. I'm going to do that on the face, and his brow, that little knot in his forehead where he's looking very serious about everything, the other bit of his brow, ridge of his nose, and the top of the cheek under the eye. Now that we've got that dark line in there, we want to be careful not to cover that dark line over too much. And this is also, see, I've just done so. I don't know if that's going to be visible to you or not, but I've made a bit of a mistake. I brushed over too often, and I ended up lifting up the skin a little bit. So I'm going to do something to fix that a bit now. All right, so my next is going to be, my next mix is going to be rosy skin with a little bit of creamy ivory. And I'm going to put a little bit more um, flow improvers to help keep it from drying too quick. And that's the, that's part of the reason why this skin pulled up is because it's the, the flow improver is making it dry more slowly. So my usual speed uh, is too quick and I end up tearing the paint up. So I'm just going to paint over that little blob with that lighter paint and push it down a little bit to try to get that paint to lie back down again. Bridge of the nose, top of the brow, a little knot in his head. There we go. And of course that eyelid. There we go. Now I can almost see enough of the eye that I would risk doing my usual uh, reflection dot, but I'm not going to try that right now. I feel a little bit unsteady, so I'm not going to do it another time. Okay, this final highlight back of the knuckles on that hand, maybe just a little bit on that knuckle, which is sticking further forward. And then on the other hand, top of the thumb. Just where the light would catch it directly to bring it up a little bit. Fingertip, fingertip just a little bit to make it visible in the light. quite like this mini. He's got a nice, um, he's really well sculpted. I wish I could remember who the sculptor was. I think I'm going to have to look. Let's just take a quick look and see who the sculptor was. Romag. Bobby Jackson. There we go. Bobby Jackson sculpt. Love it. <laughs> Thanks, Ox. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that's a response to me saying I was a little bit unsteady today. Um, okay. So that's all right. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's do some highlighting on the leather now. We're going to come back to the cloak in a little while. I'm pretty happy with it at the moment. So we got dark leather and light leather, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Harvest Brown. Oh, thanks, I appreciate that. I still think it'd be great to have somebody else on the stream as well, just to chat to and to uh, remind me when I'm on mute and all those kinds of things. The other thing that happens here all the time is... Uh, is customers come in and I need somebody to talk to the customers so I can keep keep painting. But uh, it doesn't always work out. All right, so there's my Harvest Brown. It's kind of a gooey paint, but that's what I like about it because it becomes quite transparent when you mix it with other colors and it adds that sort of leathery tone to it. So I'm gonna mix just a tiny bit of ruddy leather and I'm gonna end up with two mixes. A mix at the top is gonna be the ruddy leather mix the mix down below is a black and brown mix. And because I'm going to make highlights with the same color with both, they're going to look like they're illuminated the same. But the base color is quite different, so that's going to help the two leathers be a little bit more um, easily identified. The part's easier to see uh, without kind of going crazy with the contrast. So just a little bit... Um, No, I'm going to do lots of highlighting, but starting with a different base color. Highlighting with the same color, starting with a different base color. So I'm going to start by doing the mask. So I'm going to reach in there to the mask, and I want to pull the brush strokes forward. 
and I want to be careful not to get this on the face and I don't want to obscure the dark line that I already painted earlier. That's helping keep the mask distinct from the skin. I'll turn them around and do the mask from the other direction. And I go back and I do it again. And there's two like little raised bits of the leather in between his hand and his Oh, right on. I appreciate that, Zox. And it uh, it can be a bit... I agree. Like, it can be... Um, uh, when it comes to the Twitch commands and all that stuff, I don't have a clue yet. I'm still working on it. But uh, I appreciate you being out there to... to help in case of, uh, of issues. So I appreciate that. So maybe what we need to do is put you as a guest on the stream, and then when I have customers, you can take over and chat with people. Or just <laughs> talk and fill the space like I do. Well, I'm off dealing with whatever visitors we get. I don't know. We may not get any visitors today. The people that I normally get uh, coming in on Sundays have already been and left. Um, we have a Warhammer group here every Sunday. And we only had a couple of people for that show up. So actually there was only one game here for, for Warhammer for uh, Age of Sigmar today. And then uh, a lot of the regulars that come in on Sundays have already been in during that. And so I don't imagine we'll get anybody coming in. Having said that, now I've cursed myself, so we'll get like 50 people coming in. I know you guys have said this before, that uh, you don't hear the sounds in the background when uh, the music's really loud. But... Uh, I, I do hear it, and it, it is a bit annoying. Am I going to any conventions this year? Well, absolutely certain I'm going to ReaperCon. Um, I, would take, I shouldn't say that, because I've had bad luck with ReaperCon in the past in terms of not being able to get there. But I'm definitely planning on going. I had a really good time last time. I loved meeting everybody and talking to everybody. So, yeah, I'm really keen to go to ReaperCon again. Um, I had been planning to go to Adepticon, but... It, in the end, I changed my mind about that. I'm not going to Adepticon. Um, I went to Las Vegas Open there a few weeks ago. Did one of the master classes uh, with Andy Wardle. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking for opportunities, maybe some smaller conventions later in the year. I'm doing a couple of local conventions that are not really much to, to write home about. They're pretty small. Got one coming up in... Uh, two months called Geek, uh, Geekwinox, which is a local kind of gaming convent or all things geek sort of event. And, uh, but outside of that, I don't know. We, uh, oh, you got one of the, yeah, I forgot that the block was opening and I would have been planning to, to do that. And I just forgot like a fool. So I didn't get one of the first block, uh, rooms. Um, I'll try again when the second block opens. And hopefully I'll get one, but uh, it's a bummer when you don't get one of the first block. Because from now on, there's no other way to get that price that low. The price is always higher from now on, which is a bit frustrating. And I, I, I pay for my room even though I go as an instructor. Just because I can be... When you go as an instructor, you have a roommate. And uh, I'm not a very pleasant roommate. I snore really, really loud, and I tend to wake up. Uh, I talk to myself and wake up in the middle of the night, so it's, I, I wake people up. So I really like to get a room of my own. You guys have been to ReaperCon a bunch of times, right? Oh, right on. Yeah, that was uh, 2019, right? That was the first one that I made it to as well. So 
So at this point, I've been to ReaperCon twice, and I've bought plane tickets to go uh, a grand total of six times now. So that's pretty good. My, my, my success rate is getting better. All right, so that's the first layer of highlights with uh, no, I I didn't I didn't manage to get into the room block. Yeah, I wish I had. I I forgot that the thing was coming up. So by the time that the block opened, and I remembered it was an hour afterwards, and the, the rooms are gone within minutes, right? So it was just no chance. All right, first layer of highlights with the black and brown with the Harvest Brown. Or is it Harvest Brown? Yes, Harvest Brown. I need to do a little bit more of that color in this one. There we go. Yeah, just a little. And because this armor is going to be kind of battered, I don't have to be so careful about making it look kind of smooth. I'm going to make it look uh, all beat up. All right, there we go. There's a bunch of different ways to make the leather look kind of battered. You could highlight by stippling. Okay, put little lines going every different direction. You can highlight by um, putting the paint on and changing the pressure as you apply the paint. And then it's going to smear in some places. It's going to be more paint in others. And that's going to give a bit of an organic look to the leather. But for this, I think I'm just going to focus on... Oh, that should be purple. I painted that black and brown, but that bit should be purple, so I'm gonna have to fix that. Anyway, I'm just kind of messing around, doodling a little bit to add the first layer of orangey brown on the black and brown. So all of these plates are getting this color, even the ones that are in the shadow underneath. Everything needs a little bit of a highlight at the start. just to give it a little bit of visual interest, I guess. And then uh, we'll do quite a bit more highlighting in other areas. Just a question for you there, Zox. I, uh, as a, one of the other moderators, I uh, I turned on the stream the other day. What day was that? Thursday. And uh, the settings in the auto mod, the thing that, like the, the shield thing that keeps people from spamming bad words and all that, that had been turned on. And uh, the property that had been activated was that the only people that could see it was people that had been followers for 30 days. And I've been trying to figure out if that might have been why um, I painted online there for about two hours or so. And I think there was only like two, two people for 10 minutes total were present in the stream. And I'm wondering if the moderation tool that I had turned on, the settings that were in it kept people from being, from participating in the stream. And if that was the case, I need to, or I guess we need to have a bit of an agreement about how those settings are going to be. Because certainly I, I had not deliberately turned that on. I had just assumed that the, that the auto mod settings hadn't been changed from the last time I used it. But the, uh, the settings were different. Kept anybody from watching. Okay, I'm puttering without telling people what I'm doing. So I fixed that purple bit underneath, underneath there that needed to be purple. I've done a first highlight on all this uh, darkened leather. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another highlight on all the leather with adding this orange-brown into the previous mix for both colors. So for one color it's going to be darker, the other one's going to be lighter. But it's, the highlight's created with the same color. 
Okay, maybe I have different access because I have editor access. That might be why I can see more controls than uh, than normal. All right, I'll ask I'll ask Liz about it the next chance I get. All right, so that lighter colored first on the softer leather. So that's the mask, the cloth, sleeves, boots. Like uh, no, the boots I was meant to do a different color, didn't I? I ended up thinking about the wrong thing, so I. So I'm just reaching into all these little bits of fold in here in the the mask. And just doing a little bit of a basic highlight to bring out the shape. Nothing too complicated there. And do the same thing on the soft cloth where it sticks out underneath here by the belt. Just a little bit of a highlight. Where the light would catch a little bit, not too much. The most raised edge of the belt pouch. I'm going to do a little bit on there. There's a little pouch inside under his cloak. I'm going to get that. So the top edge of it, right in under his cloak, I'm going to do it there. And that's lighter than I normally would do it, but I want it to be visible. So because it's going to have natural shadow on it, I'm doing it lighter than I normally would just to make it visible. Okay. And now we need to do this cloth underneath the armor. I'm just going to do it a little bit. Like that. And my brush strokes on this are going downwards because as the knee comes out from under the light, it's protruding more out into the light from the shadows. So I'm just doing a little bit lighter towards the bottom. Just want to make it a little bit more visible. Now the challenging area is going to be this sleeve up here. Okay, right on. No, thanks for the input there. That's what I used to see as well. And then Liz changed my settings. Okay, there we go. Because I have to change the name of the stream every time, right? And you need editor mode to do that. Okay, so now I'm doing the sleeve. And I'm thinking about this zone up here as I'm doing it. I want the that lighting to be parallel, the highlights to be parallel to that on the sleeve. So it looks like it's lit by the same light source. I need to re-emphasize the one on the mask. That one doesn't really look, uh, it's not really that visible, so I'm going to do it again. Again, because of the natural shadow, the mask disappears. So we'll make it lighter than we, uh, we normally would. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the black and brown with the, the lighter mix. So that's my ruddy brown, ruddy leather, and that's the black and brown mix. That's what I'm going to use now. And my palette is drying, so I want water. Got my little spray bottle to add more water into the palette. So yeah, for uh, for conventions this year as well, um, I'm planning to go to Italy in the fall, and hopefully going to get to Monte San Savino. We've been working hard to try to find like a, an Airbnb to stay at, and if we can find a good one, we're definitely going to go. Problem is, I don't want to have to drive, so if we uh, can't get a an Airbnb fairly close. We would probably have to drive, and uh, I'm not keen on that. Because there's not much in the way of a train. You can get a train to the town, but you can't get like taxis and buses very easily. And it'll be very busy at that time of year with the, uh, with the painting event going on. But really want to get to it. We've planned to go several times, and just various things got in the way and stopped us from going, so... We had saved the money up and put it aside, so the money's still there to go. We just got to work out the, the logistics of a place to stay and transport and all that. Outside of that, we'll see. Like, i am got a lot of freedom to travel to that stuff, and uh, I would like to, so. 
there's a, a convention near here in uh, Rhode Island, I think it is, called Huzzah. And I've heard good things about that one, so I might like to try check that one out. That's at the end of May. We'll see if I can get to that one. So I'm just doing the same thing as I did on the previous one, highlighting the leather with little dots and dashes, making it look kind of rough. And concentrating those marks in a position parallel to the highlights it with the other colors. So the highlights are concentrated there on this arm. So my marks on the leather on the other part of the arm, the other uh, surface, the other texture, going to concentrate the highlights in a similar area. Same thing where this highlight goes up to over the shoulder. I want to concentrate the highlights in that line so that where the curves line up to reemphasize the, the, the apparent light direction. Just like that. Okay, and now the plates down below, same idea. There's that, that curve is mirrored here. So I'm going to highlight a little bit more along there and along here. So that this curve on his leg mirrors that curve, mirrors this, mirrors that in terms of the position of the highlight. Ultimately, this part of the armor is not going to be as light um, because it's not going to be getting as much direct light. And I may actually, I probably will go back and glaze it back down. Or maybe I'll glaze it with an ink or something. But we want it to be visible and to look like leather. Oh, right on. Gen Con, yeah, I would love to do Gen Con, but it's just, it's really hard to make it viable, you know, and uh, sometimes I feel like I'm really interested in going and checking it out, and other times I'm like, I just don't want to deal with an event that big. And my... Uh, so my daughter's at university in France, but she's finishing up in France uh, for this year. And then next year she goes to Dublin for school, which is going to be kind of cool. So I'm hoping I might be able to, be able to get like a, uh, oh, if you're close to it, yeah, that'd be hard to resist. But uh, yeah, with my daughter going to school in Dublin this coming year, um, she'll be there as of, I think, August. Um, I'm hoping to do like, a workshop with Marcus Frizzoni or something like that. Um, if I can line it up with one of the, because I'm inevitably going to be traveling back and forth from there now and try to line it up so I can do some interesting events like that. I got to ask uh, Samurai Jack there to uh, put his enabler skills onto the, onto the job and find me some events to go to in Ireland with uh, miniature painting. Or other conventions, you know, like gaming conventions that might have a miniature component or whatever. So it's not going to be there anyway. Yeah. He's a bit dangerous. He's got that research skill set. All right. So same thing. This is a lighter mix of the same dark brown. And I'm... Again, lining up the position of the highlights and the marks to mirror uh, the areas around it. And this helps give a sense of the volume of the leg, the volume of the armor, and also the visual noise makes it stand out from the smooth leather that I put in the background. You could also do it by like making the, the dark leather armor with that, like doing dashes and hatch marks. And you can make the other leather look soft by doing thousands and thousands of little dots. Oh, that's too bad. We were in Toulouse there in the spring. Uh, it was really nice.
All right, so I need to do another lighter mix in the orange. I'm going to mix a little bit of the creamy ivory. Oh, that was too much. There we go. Don't dark it back down again. There, that's better. Way too much creamy ivory in that one. Made it too light. And I will do, I think, the next little bit with tiny dots to make it look a little bit softer. So if you don't want to do dots, don't. Like doing thousands of little dots can be really frustrating and difficult to get them to be like a consistent uh, diameter. The key is to have a brush in very good condition, um, to just be patient, breathe, get a comfortable brush position, and just kind of go for it and practice. Like this. And, and change the orientation of the brush, change the position of, brush, of the brush so that you don't end up just making really regular symmetrical patterns of dots that looks less organic and more like a texture, like a cloth texture or something. And if you want it to look like leather, you want to avoid that. Um, you can also go back and use the same approach to put in damage on the leather to make it look like it's been uh, cut or gouged or whatever, or there's cracks in it where it folds. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to put a few little dots to make it look a little bit softer. And I'll do the same thing on his mask, make his mask look a little bit soft. Just a few. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I'm going to do a lighter mix in parallel on the darker leather. So these are getting closer and closer in value even through their two different mixes. They started with a different color. They still look quite distinctly different on the model. And I'm going to just do marks and dashes and cuts and scrapes on the armor with this lighter color to make it look like it's... Uh, a well-beaten, well-used set of leather armor. Um, although our rich guy here, maybe, maybe his armor shouldn't be looking too too beat up, but that's the way I'm going with it. It's going to make it look a little bit more organic. I'm still keeping in mind where the highlights should be. Okay, in terms of their position relative to the rest of the body. So this bracer is going to have that highlight in line with that bicep, with this piece of armor, with the, the hood, with the sleeve. All of that is in the same relative position on the curve. But the purple and the most raised areas are going to be lighter because they're going to be closer to my light source overall. This is my plan. Soften up that leather with some marks and dashes. We have you with that. Okay, I need to do a little bit more of that down here and there, I think. Almost done with this color of the leather, I think. Now, if you're using a kind of a beat up brush or a a larger brush or a synthetic brush, it might be really hard to make these marks. And you really do want to do this with this, the, the finest tip brush that you've got. Press gently to make thousands and thousands of tiny little uh, hash marks, little lines, straight scratches, and vary the direction as much as you can. So you don't end up making like a, a symmetrical pattern or something that looks like a line, like I just did. If you do put too much on there and make something that looks like a, a solid line, you can always go back to your shadow color or the, uh, the base coat color, that black and brown or something like it, and go the other way and put little scratches and things back in that are a darker color. And that, well, you could basically shade with that, those marks 
to make the apparent color be darker if you wanted to kind of bring your shadow colors back. Like that. There we go. Just like that. Bring some shape back. Okay. And if you decide you don't like it, go back to the midtone and connect them back up again with more scratches. Just like when you're blending, you can go back and forth a bunch of times, lighten it, darken it. And if you're consistent with this, the texture, I don't mean like lining up all the scratches on top of each other, but consistent with the, the style of the texture, it's just going to get more visually interesting the more you do. You can repeat the process a bunch of times. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I need to do the boots though. We need to give the boots a leather texture. And I think I'm gonna get a color that I hate, but we'll see if it works for me today. That's polished leather, 9430 from Reaper. I always find this color a bit gooey, but it always seems like the right color for painting leather. So we're gonna give this try today and see whether it works. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a lighter soft texture on the cuff of the boot because that's where the boots folded down so it should be soft on the inside and I'm gonna do a more dotted texture down below welcome to the stream everyone shameless plug for the miniature monthly discord of course good job I always forget to do that kind of thing all right so there's that gross leather color Hopefully it's going to work today. So that's my leather base color. And I've got a big blob of skin tone in the way there. Let's get rid of that. I don't, maybe I'll mix this ruddy leather with the skin tone to lighten it first. Oh, I like that idea. There we go. And now I'm going to mix the polished leather into that lightened ruddy leather for a first layer of highlight. Ooh, yes, I like it. There we go. So there's my first highlight for the boots. And this is for the exterior leather of the boots, not for the, not for the, uh, these cuffs are gonna be lighter colored. So I'm gonna put this color in the, in the shadows. But I don't know if this makes sense, but I'm gonna hit the areas that are raised in the shadows. So like this boot is way in the back there. The raised parts of that boot are going to get this color dabbed and dashed and dotted onto it to make those shapes visible within the shadow. I paint some on the cuff, even though I said I wasn't going to. There we go. Make the boots leathery looking. There we go. do the same thing on the other boot. Bear in mind that our curve parallel to there is going to be about there. So we're going to start building up the highlight in parallel to that. It's not going to be nearly as light because it's on the lower part of the body away from our not very intense light source. Okay, and now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, so that color was the ruddy leather initially. So I'm going to take some ruddy leather off to the side. I really like the way it looked with a bit of the skin tone in it. 
So I'm going to mix some rosy shadow skin tone into the ruddy leather. And this is going to be like the dotted texture color of the soft interior of the boots. So like little dots on the inside of that where it's a softer. I mean, you could even do this as cloth and put like a little hem there if you wanted to. Like there was a lining in the boots. And where this guy is kind of rich, we might be able to get away with that. But for now, I'm just going to do it with little dots and dashes. There we go. And I mean this to be not shiny. I want it to be like kind of soft. Lots of little dots. So the, the size of the highlight is going to be wider than the areas adjacent to it that might be a little bit shinier. Make things look shiny, small highlights, bright next to dark, light next to dark. Things that are soft, things that are rough, larger highlights, not shiny, so small, larger highlights and don't put the dark right up against the, the light. That'll make them look shiny. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit more of rosy skin tone in that to lighten it further. Yeah, I like that. And then we're gonna do another round of little dots. Make it look soft. enough. Same thing on the other leg. Not too much, just enough to make the highlight distinct. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And now I'm going to add polished leather to my ruddy leather mix from a few moments ago. So there's ruddy leather with a little bit of skin tone with a little bit of polished leather mixed together. And this is going to be the next highlight on the polished leather. I'm going to do just a little bit on the knees and the shed. So this side is quite in shadow. And then I'm going to move my way back down to the toes. And I'm going to do a fair bit on the toe to make the toe highlighted and stand out. So that's on the leg in the shadow on the other side. I'm going to do a little bit more, focus on the folds, the raised parts of the folds. And this can be a fairly small highlight because the leather is going to be a little bit shiny. And at the bottom, when I get to the bottom, I'm going to kind of do a stronger highlight on the toe. And at this point, we could make the toe look scuffed if we wanted to by adding quite a lot of light color to it making things um, so alternate between dark and light to make it look like there's scratches and scuffs in the leather. So what if we were to do that? We would take our black and brown, which I know we haven't used on this side yet, mix some black and brown with polished leather, a little bit of flow and brewer. And we can make some cuts and gouges in the boots. We can paint the dark line around the bottom of the boot where the sole is attached. A few little marks at the edge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight with a lighter color over this when I'm done. And so right now I'm kind of darkening the shadow parts of these boots with this mixture of black and brown and polished leather. some scratches and that kind of thing on the edges of the boots. And if you can kind of picture where the leather is a hinge, like at the ball of the foot, close to the ankle, you're going to get these little creases that are darker and the edges of the creases are going to be lighter where the, the leather is kind of, the polish on the leather is broken away. And that's what I'm going to do now. That's the wrong color. I'm going to grab my lighter color again. So this is polished leather mixed with ruddy brown, a little bit of lighter skin tone added in again. 
and I'm going to add a few tiny little marks of damage on the leather by the ankle, like just a few. And then by the toe, we did those scratches, the dark scratches, kind of highlighting the outside edges of those scratches with the lighter paint. Make it look like that's where the, the boot has been folded a little bit. Scuff the tip of the toe. If you want to put a hole in his boot, you could. You could make a light mark and then put a dark mark in the center of it to make it look like there's a hole in his boot. There we go, a little hole in the boot. And there's the hole in his toe. All right. And I'm feeling like that leather is pretty much done. So now it's time to go back to doing the cloak. Make the cloak look all fancy. I need to think about what colors I'm going to do on the cloak for a minute. How I'm going to do that. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to do the metallic bits. I'm going to throw a bit of uh, gunmetal on the palette, just a tiny bit. I'm going to grab a synthetic brush. Size, what size is this? Triple zero. Triple zero synthetic tack long brush. I'm going to paint my metallic areas with gunmetal from Vallejo Game Color using the synthetic brush. So what am I going to paint? This belt buckle on his chest. There we go. Uh, the belt buckle on his belt. I think I'm just going to paint the whole buckle metal. I'm not going to make it a gemstone. There we go. And I'm going to do the whole dagger. So the hilt, the blade, got quite a bit of purple on that dagger already. That's kind of fun. I'm going to do the ball, the pommel, and finally the back of it. Just a little mold line right there. If you're getting this model ready to go, watch out for the mold lines on those knuckles. It can be hard to spot until it's too late. Now, if I was hardcore, I'd remove those mold lines right now. I'm not feeling like it. And I'm going to put a second coat of this on the front where those purple marks are to kind of hide them a little bit better. There, pretty happy with that. I'm going to let that dry for a minute, and then we'll do a black wash, or a dark brown wash over it. What else do I need to do before I do the cloak? Stone gray. Let's do some stone gray. I seem to always use stone gray, but, you know, this is the way life goes. So stone gray, and it makes a little bit of black and brown in it. And this is going to be the color for my stone on the base. All right. Grab a bit of black and brown. Ooh, I'm going to put some indigo blue in there as well, just for no reason at all, except to make it blue. Stone gray. So this is my base coat mix color for the base. How did I pick those colors? I just grabbed dark colored paints that were already on my palette, mix them together, and then I'm going to mix over them, or paint over them with just a straight stone gray to lighten them up. But this odd purplish blue brown color is going to tint the gray that I put over it. So it's going to look like a dirty street. Dirty street in the shadows is what I'm looking for. There we go. All the way around with a shadowy color. Give that a moment to dry before we do anything further with it. Getting close to the end there. All right. We do need to put a dark wash over the metallics. The metallics are dry enough for that, but that's going to take a moment to dry. So let's use the black and brown for that. You know what? I haven't put any nightshade purple on here yet. That's what I'm going to be using for my black. So 
light shade purple. Put a little touch of that on there. Just touch a touch of that in with the black and brown. A little bit of water. And this is what I'm going to put as a wash over my metals. Dull them down. So that's going to go over the belt buckle. So here's the, the consistency of the paint I'm using. Not, not, a little bit runny, not too dark. And it's going to dull the metal down. And whatever I slop over the side onto the belt is not really going to significantly change the color. There we go. That's what I wanted. Do that over the hilt, the blade. My brush strokes are going downwards so that I can kind of hide the little extra drop by the edge of the cloak. Back of the blade, downwards. Go. Pommel. Just realize I'm using like a size four or something. Size four for us there to put that on. But it's got a nice tip on it. Good enough for what I'm doing anyway. Okay, pretty happy with that. And then we're gonna let those dry. You know, I should do that color on the um, over the stones as well. Do a nice dark wash over all that stone. Really dark. There we go. So I'm gonna wash load in the brush. And I'm just gonna fill in. So slowly go across the stone. Let that run into the crevices. It's gonna make lots of horrible. Uh, what do you call those tide marks as it dries which is good because it's like a dirty city street and then I'm going to highlight that with a bit of the stone gray maybe even lighten up the stone gray a bit to give me a finished base looking pretty good getting close to the end now still not sure what I want to do with that cloak Maybe what we'll do is just highlight it and shade it a bit more and then smooth out. Maybe do a little bit of smoother blending on it. Why not? I'm guessing this size four is not the brush. On. Well, the brush would actually work for the job. So I'm going to grab some. So I'm going to put some more shadow on the base of the cloak. I'm grabbing some indigo, night sky indigo. I'm going to put a touch of the nightshade purple into it to darken it. I'm going to put a drop of water in it, just to thin it a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I load that back into the brush, and I'm looking for my shadow areas. So that's going to be inside the cloak in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, so this is the, the paint that I'm using, okay? I'm going to reach into that part of the cloak. I wiggle the brush a little bit to get some paint to start to flow. And then I'm going to pull downwards to the bottom Sort of push that paint down to the bottom, deepen the shadow at the bottom. And I want to be careful not to get this on the leather because that's all finished painted. I'm going to use that same color in between his legs. There's like a, a low spot in the cloak. So I'm going to push that in there. And that's the kind of spot where two brush blending, where you use one brush to put the paint on and a second brush to, to move the paint. Can be helpful to push the paint off the raised areas into the low spots. There we go. Continue to deepen that shadow at the back. I'm going to do the same thing under that arm in there. I'm going to push a little bit of a darker color in there. Now, if you're not comfortable doing this with a big brush, don't. Just grab whatever small size brush you're comfortable with. The key thing is just kind of push the color into the shadow. There we go. Looking dark. And then on the back, same idea. I'm going to put this underneath. And I think these folds are not going to get much light at all. So I'm going to start up fairly high, about halfway up. Put the tip of the brush in there and pull down. And what that's going to do, you can get that sideways brush stroke that's going to put more paint 
down at the tip and less at the belly of the brush. And that's going to kind of push the paint into the low spot on the folds. And as it dries, it's going to darken. And it's going to give me more shadow depth on that part of the cloak. So I'll do the same thing on the other side. That's going to work really well right there. Just kind of repeat that brush stroke a bunch of times. And each time it pushes the paint further in. Do it from the other side. Start over here and do the same thing. At the tip of the brush at the same point. But just go sideways a bunch of times. Pushing that thin paint further in. This, I think, is too close to the light source. My light source has migrated from there to kind of like up here. I'm okay with that. A little bit at the bottom as a result. A little bit of shadow down there. Maybe even a little bit in there, in that little. So what do you do if you do it wrong? If you put too much shadow in where you don't want it, well, you just highlight again and correct it. There's nothing to it. You can see where that dried, it darkened, and it kind of disappeared into the shadow back there, which is what I was hoping for. Okay, nice deep shadows. And I think now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the mid-tone purple. I'm going to glaze that back over, and I'm going to pull down and then pull up. So there's a zone right about there where the, the main color is the mid-tone imperial purple. And that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to glaze more imperial purple in there. And so I'm going to park the little blobs, the little dots of imperial purple in that zone. And that's what we were talking about earlier with uh, bringing the color saturation back. It's going to be more color saturation back just in the shadow below. You can do this with a smaller brush, thin glaze, you don't want to overdo it. I'm putting quite a bit of water in this to thin it down. I'm not going to have too much in the brush. I'm using a fairly big brush for that, but you know, it's a, the brush is in good shape, so why not? I'm going to start up here. I'm going to pull down, and it's, let me show you the consistency I'm using. Okay, there's not much paint there, but as it dries, it darkens, and it's going to leave that film of very thin purple paint. And this color is already present on the model in that zone. So we can park the excess on something which is already the same color, and then we're not going to get horrible tide marks as a result. So this belt in here already has this color. So I'm going to park my blobs of paint right there. There we go. So we're going to keep going with that. I'm going to do it again. I want it to be a little bit darker than I made it. And this is going to bring back that color saturation and also make the layering look a little bit smoother, a little bit less chalky. There we go. Okay. Yeah, probably. <laughs> the mom handbook. But we, we have sun, Sunday dinner uh, with her every week. And so alternating week, she comes to our place. And the other week, we go to her place. So this week, we're going to her house for supper which is ideal from my perspective. Finish doing this, and then go raid mom's cookie jar. Kind of classic. Sunday afternoon behavior. I 
I quite like the way that this is coming together. It looks really dark, but I can still see all the highlights in it. The purple blend is looking smoother. There's a distinct difference in the colors from the top to the bottom of the cloak. I do feel like I want to put a little bit more blue indigo and that um, uh, the night sky indigo and the shadow color at the bottom. I'm just going to do a glaze, I think, on the highlights with the night sky indigo. This needs to be thinner. And I'm going to pull from the top down. So aiming for these slightly patchy areas in here and pulling down towards the bottom. The same thing is going to happen. I've already painted those zones this color. So any tide marks are going to end up on top of something which is already painted this indigo color, which means that the tide marks are going to be uh, invisible when they dry. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Looking very smooth. Okay. Well, we're pretty much done with this guy at this point. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the rim of the base nightshade purple. Just because I've got it on the palette, it's practically black. Just not to waste the paint. And uh, it would be hard to tell the difference between this purple and black anyway. And then I've got to do a bit of highlighting on the stones. And I haven't really come up with an idea that I like for doing a freehand of any kind on that cloak. So I might just leave it for now. But if anybody out there has any ideas, let me know. If you can convince me it's a good idea, I might try just about anything. I'm really happy with how that guy's looking overall. Thanks, Solar Wind. Appreciate that. Did make a bit of a mistake right there, and I didn't make the glaze go right to the edge, so I've actually created a little bit of a tide mark there. I'll just clean that up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can show you that mistake. So what I'm looking at is right, right there and there. there that, that slightly darker line is where when I was painting from the back, pulling this way, I didn't come all the way to the front with the brush and I created a tide mark. And there's pretty much no way to get rid of it now. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be there. The only way to get rid of it is going to be to highlight again over top of it and then reapplying all the glazing, which is totally cool. We can do that. And that's kind of, I mean, that's the solution to the problem, right, is to reapply the glazes. Not the glazes, the highlights. So you replay the highlights and then reapply the glazes and those marks will go away. All right, now we're going to do a little bit of silver on the dagger and the belt buckle still. So let's, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the Vallejo Game Air silver. Okay, and these paints are super thin, beautifully made. They go on very, very smooth takes practically no paint, tiny little dot will go a mile. So you do want to be careful with these paints 
because you can very easily put a big a big flood of them on there. So just a little bit of it, and I'm going to put some dots, and those dots are going to go towards my light zone. So there's my highlight that I was talking about earlier, oriented towards the light. So I'm going to put these marks on the pommel, oriented in the same direction. I'm going to do a little bit of an edge highlight on that hilt. And then I think for the top of the blade, not the whole blade, just that one edge, that one side, actually you know, it's showing up quite strongly in the light already. This part of the blade in here, just at the top, I'm going to put my brush strokes upwards, just to put a little bit of that brighter silver, like the light is shining past the, the cloak and catching the top of the blade. A little bit of light. There we go. I don't want to go all the way down the blade like that. So the light's just kind of catching it there. And then for the belt buckles, there's a, a tongue on that. So I'm going to put a little dot on that tongue and a little dot on that corner of the belt buckle there just to make it visible. Yeah, it's right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this belt buckle. I'm going to put a little arc of this silver at the top on the border. I'm going to put a little bit of a dot like that, and a little bit where the light would catch in, like a little cup shape down there. And that's enough to make that belt buckle kind of stand out. Okay, so that guy's pretty much done, except for the stones on the base. So let's do that quickly. I'll do that with a larger brush. I'm going to grab that stone gray that I put on there. That was my gross mix that I made the brick color with. Add more stone gray into it. And I'm just going to stipple the bricks in the direction of the light. So the light is this way. So I'm going to stipple the bricks a little bit. I don't want to go too far down where the shadow would lay. Okay, I don't want to fill that in. I want to just do this where the light's going to hit directly. Just a little bit, but not too much. And I've left that shadow back between his legs and under the cloak. Okay, and on the back, just a touch of this at the front. Like that. Not too much, just enough for it to show. And then I'm going to do another mix, more stone color, more stippling, slightly lighter color, slightly further out. It's going to darken as it dries, that's probably enough. You could dry brush this step. As long as you kind of keep in mind the position where you don't want the those um, highlights to and the stone to go too far back in the shadow. I don't want it to be too light. I want the lightest highlights to be up here. And I've kind of lost those values a bit. This is a little bit dark now. Okay. But the whole figure is kind of is kind of dark. I think the only thing I don't like is I think I've made that silver too light. So I'm gonna do one glaze. A little bit of purple in that glaze I made earlier. Thin it out again. I'm going to redo that. Glaze. I'm going to reapply that glaze on the belt buckles. They're too shiny for me. That's going to dull them back down again. But that silver highlighting that we did is still going to show through. There we go. So that's pretty much a finished model. Uh, there's one more thing we could do if you're feeling motivated, and that's to dark line everything. And that's uh, always a good practice to get used to dark lining everything. So I'll remind you again how we do the dark lining. You want to get a long, narrow brush. So I'm going to enjoying this Zem brush. 
So there's my Zen size two Kalinsky Sable. It's got a long, thin brush tip. And I'm going to use this nightshade purple. I'm gonna put a bit of flow improver in it. I could also put some black ink into it. Don't really need to today. And then for the black lining, what I'm gonna do is I wanna be able to make long, thin black lines, okay? And these lines, I'm gonna look for anywhere that two surfaces meet and I'm gonna push that dark line in there. So like on my thumb, if I was to black line my thumb, It'd be a line like that. Under my thumb, it would be a line like, like that to make that shadow stronger. Okay, make the shapes defined. And that's what you're gonna do everywhere on the model. Check my phone here. Somebody's trying to message me, which is probably gonna be my family. Come on. My wife let me know she's walking the dog out this way. Okay. So now I grab my dark purple. And this is what, what I would have liked to do in around the mask. But I'm not going to do that because I've already gone in and put that dark line with the dark brown earlier. So I don't need to do it. But see, there's a little bit of roughness around that skin. So I'm going to put a line of this purple between the skin and the cloak. And that's going to make those two surfaces stand out better in between the fingers to find the shapes better. Do the same thing on the other hand. So between his forefinger and his thumb, between each of the fingers, between his wrist, uh, the leather of that bracer and his wrist, around each of those little leather buckles, the bracer and the other leather. Everywhere two surfaces meet, you're going to put in this dark line. And that's really going to make all the shapes well defined. Outline of the belt pouch. Outline of the flap of the belt pouch. Outline of the fold in the belt pouch. Between the belt pouch and the leather armor. Between each piece of leather armor and the leather underneath everywhere the two surfaces meet and you want to line it with this color that's really going to improve the overall definition of the model when i say everywhere i mean everywhere and it gets it takes a bit of practice to force yourself to get to do it sometimes you think ah oh, it's good enough but trust me you want to do all of it and the more you practice it, the finer it gets, the easier it gets, the faster you can do it. And the overall look of your models really improves. It's, it's time well invested to force yourself to do it. Even if you do it badly the way I do. Time well wasted, as they say. You can see it goes pretty quick when you're practiced at it. This is not taking me very long to get finished. And this is a skill that will pay off in so many other techniques. Like this is the skill you need to do painting the lines and tartans, to do painting freehands. I'm always going to harp on people and say you really need to do this just to improve your brush control, improve your brush skills. Well worth the time. Time well wasted. I say time well wasted because the first while that you do it, it's going to be messy. What I'm doing here, doing this kind of speed approach to it, is pretty messy. But the more you do, the smoother it gets and the payoff just gets better and better. Well defined shapes. What do you do if you make a mistake? Well, you quickly grab another brush 
and you clean off the mistake. Super simple. There we go. That's our finished model. Still tempted to do a fancy pattern on there, but I, I just, I'm not feeling it today. I'm feeling like doing a freehand, but I don't have an idea for a freehand to do, so that's probably a good clue that I shouldn't do it. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's why I always have this stack of brushes here, usually a big one like that, ready to go, right? And I flood the mistake to clean it off. Here, I'll do it, I'll make a mistake on purpose and then, and then fix it so you can see what I mean. So there's my mistake. Oh, crap. No, that's not dark enough. Let's make a worse mistake. Blah. There we go. Put a big old blob in there. I'm like, oh, no. What do I do? What do I do? Just flood it with water. So stop it from drying out. Dry off your brush. And then bring that brush in there, the damp brush, and soak up all that paint and water. And get rid of it. Clean it right off again. And there's no evidence if you're quick. If you're not quick, you're going to end up with a little bit of a um, of a tide mark. But it's it's a good uh, good technique to get practiced with. So there he is. Still feel like I really he needs he needs something more. He needs a little bit more bling. I'm not sure what that's going to be. All right, so there's uh, our rogue done. The happy rogue out there causing trouble in the in the wilderness. I mean, in the city. He's a city troublemaker. There he is. There's our rogue. Look pretty good on the table. Game ready. How long did that take? But a bit over two hours. I'm happy with that. Okay, we're gonna call that done for the day. Thanks very much to everybody who chatted. Zoxy, Solar Wind, always lovely to hear from you guys. And I hope you guys will be around the next time we do one. And uh, that's it. <laughs>